Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Real Money, Real Business podcast. I'm Lauren, and today we have Shubham on the show, who's selling a display advertising and Amazon Associates business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Hey, Shubham, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Looking forward to learning more about you and your business. But before we dive in, I'm going to give the listeners a brief summary of the business so that they know more about what we're talking about. As I mentioned, this is a display advertising and Amazon Associates business. It was created in July 2019, and it's in the outdoors, automotive and travel niches. The average revenue for the business is $16,900 per month, and it makes an average of $15,631 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are a domain and all site content and files, an email list with 5,336 subscribers, and Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube social media accounts. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 67494 to learn more about this business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So with all of that out the way, let's hear from the seller. Shubham, can you fill us in on your background in starting and running online businesses? Yeah, for sure. Actually, I've been doing SEO since my college days, and it's about 2011, I guess. So I was providing services to the other businesses, and I was work as a freelance SEO. Then join a 9-to-5 job in a software company in India. But after a few days, I decided to go full-time with the digital marketing things and like that, and again, start providing service to the other businesses. And then... From there, I just start building my own portfolio of website and I start with the content side. And from then, I just managed to build, grow and sell more than six sites now. And currently, I have more than five to six sites in my portfolio, which is generating over 2.3 million page views per month. So this is all I have to say. Fantastic. It certainly sounds like you've got a good amount of experience under your belt. So when you were looking for a site to start, what inspired you just to start this particular site on this particular topic? Yeah, first thing is, as it's a kind of topic which is personally interested to me because I like an outdoor person. So I like mostly hobby site or outdoor type things. So first, it's a hobby for me. The second thing is, when I was doing something for market research for which one I should start. I just find this area is somehow not that saturated and there are not that good sites on this topic. So I just quickly uh, got the opportunity to step in and I just start doing this. And obviously, my interest in this is obviously a particular thing which is encouraged me to start this site as well. Yeah, it certainly helps to have an interest in the topic. It makes it that much more fun to really dig in and find those keywords when you were deciding on how to monetize the site, why did you choose display ads as your main source of monetization? Yeah, there are a few reasons why I choose the display advertising because as I mentioned before, like I was building and running online businesses from more than six years now. So I just found that display advertising business is somehow easy to create. We're just looking to go into the online marketing field. So I can write about anything I just wanted to write about. So and I can monetize that content with the display advertising. I do have some affiliates post, or you can ask me about money-making posts, but I think display advertising is something uh, bread and butter for me because I'm doing this for a very long time. So this is the reason. And second thing is, when it's come to the affiliate, there are way too many things you have to do. Like you have to purchase the product, you have to test them, you have to set up a lab or something. You have to be a good setup to create a affiliate-heavy website. if you willing to create something which is really valuable unless you don't want to go with just to aggregate whatever it's online so maybe this is something really inspired me to 
monetize this website primarily with the display ads. Yeah, I think that's a great point. You can certainly create a more diverse range of content when you're using display advertising. As you mentioned, you do have affiliate links on your site as well. So are you affiliated with multiple affiliate partners? Yeah, mostly the most affiliate sales come from the Amazon associate. Rather than this, I have another affiliate program on the Rakuten as well. Okay, fantastic. You know, it certainly sounds like you have a passion for this business. As you say, it is a hobby of yours. What are the reasons you've decided to sell this business now? Yeah, to be honest, there are quite a few things. I just wanted to sell this site first. The thing is, I was trying to grow this site uh, way too big, but I am unable to do this because there are a few things. First is time. As I mentioned in my Sherlock questions, I just put way too many time on this business. Like I just try to build this website in an authority in this space. So I just had to put my own personal things in this site because I'm a bit picky with everything, like with the images, with the content quality and site design to whatever it is. So I put way too many effort in this site. So other businesses I have my portfolio is somehow neglected. So I just wanted to diversify things and I try to grow other businesses I have. So I just wanted to cut a few times from my day to focus on other sites I have. And obviously I need money to grow the existing site. So this is something which has encouraged me to sell this site. And though it's a really a, one of my favorite websites, but things can happen. So I decided to list this site for sale. Yeah, I think that'll be a good project using the capital from this site to build the rest of your portfolio. I think you should hopefully experience a lot of success there. Speaking of success, what would you say was the biggest success story or win that you experienced with this particular business? Obviously, there are quite a few, but I just mentioned one or two because first when I was start this site, I was never expecting to grow this that big because this website is one of the best, if not one or three, but you can count at least one to five in the space it's currently right now because this is old business and it's established in this niche so it's eventually grow really big and i managed to build a site which is now competing with the bigger brands like there are way too many but i just proud of like what i'm doing with this website and it's making really good money but rather than money it's kind of proud for me to build a site which is authority in this space and people trust this website and they just love to read our campaigns and this is something really encouraged me yeah it's definitely a special achievement to build a website that then becomes an authority in the niche that's every content site owner's dream so that must have been a really great feeling i'm sure there were some things that didn't feel as good or didn't go according to plan so were there any setbacks or challenges that you had to overcome yeah, obviously, because as you know, I'm from India. So there are a few things which is really hard for me because I was planning to build a community around this website. I was trying to build a YouTube channel. I was trying to create an info product, but eventually I can't do all the things well. Like I was start the YouTube channel and hire someone to create videos. The things don't go happen like what I was expecting because the people I hire for to create video he quit the job and maybe there are a few reasons behind this, but I didn't go for this. But I was planning to build a community around this site and I try to build an info product around this site, but I eventually can't do that. And obviously, there are a huge setback when it's come to the building, but email list. I have few emails with this website, but I can't manage to build a larger email list, which can be achievable. And obviously, it's not that hard to but. I just failed to do that and I failed to monitor the email list or utilize, you say, I mean, I can't utilize whatever the site have. So this is a really setback for me. Yeah, it's often, you know, even the website has so much authority, it can often be really difficult to build a community, as you say. When it comes to drawing traffic to your site and attracting viewers, where does the majority of your traffic come from? Yeah, majority of traffic come from the organic searches and Google mostly. And don't put too much effort on the social thing. Though this site is really can be a good option for the social. As you know, like not all websites do really well on social. But I think this website has a lot of potential to grow socially because there are too many social platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. I just fail to do that. The most traffic come from the 
all the mixed searches. Yeah, you mentioned that you've got a background in SEO. So have you invested much time into optimizing the on-page SEO or uh, backlink campaigns? Yeah, as you know, like I build a hundred of backlinks or you can say had thousands of backlinks before for my client. But when it's come to this website in particular, I never try to build a single backlinks. Like the, my main focus was to create a content which is really helpful for the readers as well as authority. So I hire someone who have real expertise in this niche and try to create a content which is sounds authoritative i mean i try to create a content which is somehow not that bad i mean i try to come up with something which is really helpful for my reader so maybe my point is obviously on page seo but i don't think like our content is over optimized because i don't want to just kill the user experience just for the traffic so for me it's always the reader first and search engine second and though i have to follow some SEO best practices. So I sometimes focus on on-page things, but I never overdo anything. So that's all. Yeah, I think placing all your priority in high value content, I think that's definitely the way to go. It definitely seems to be how Google is organizing their algorithms as well. So I think that gives you a lot of protection there. I know you mentioned that there's room for growth when it comes to social media, but what other growth opportunities can you identify with this business that buyers can really capitalize on? Yeah, there are a few. Like a few content on this website is uh, written before two, three years back. So maybe if a new buyer can improve this content with the new data or new content. So it's really easy for them. They can see if a spike in this traffic because it's always better to update the old content rather than focusing on the creating content when it's come to the scale. So obviously there are a few other things which can new buyer can like exploring the other shoulder niches or other things which is not covered because this industry is really big and it's something which is really passionate for the people who just living this alternative lifestyle so maybe there are way too many things buyer can explore on this and obviously other thing is utilizing the email list and start creating a bigger list and try to monetize the list and that's all and obviously social is there Yeah, that's great. It sounds like there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that buyers can take advantage of. As you say, I think that email list will be a vital one to create a traffic source that you can own and control as well. You mentioned that you work with writers who are experts in the niche. So can you walk us through what your content creation process looks like and how you involve those writers in the process? Yeah, obviously. Actually, I have a team of my writers who are just not working, not solely on this website, working on my portfolio of website. Whenever I just start to plan a new website, I just set up a Zoom call with my team of writers and I ask them, like, I just willing to start this website. Like, who have the expertise to cover this topic? And eventually, a couple of writers in our team have the real expertise in this. And one is actually living this lifestyle for a very long time. So he have all the know-how on this thing. So maybe this really interested for me to hire someone who have all the expertise like how we want to create a content and obviously we have the know-how about the actual topic so that's the thing and second thing is i always look for people who have the real expertise in this niche rather than like i don't want to go for some freelance writer who are just jack of all and expert in nothing so i usually don't hire for some generic freelance writer so Mostly uh, looking for someone who have the real authority in certain niche. So I pick someone from other freelance platform like Upwork or ProBlogger and then just interview about like how they think about this project or like what kind of expertise they have. And maybe not all of the great writers because it doesn't mean you have the expertise in certain things. You are a good writer. So eventually I start with a few topics as a paired test with them and try to involve as much as possible to give them the ideas. Like, this is what I am looking for. This is how you have to do it. And sometimes few people got things really first, but other people can take time to get things. So, but I think if you can test a few writers for more than 10 to 15 tests, I found maybe one writer who is really good option to go for. Like they have the know-how about these things and they know how to write a really good content, which is really helpful for readers. 
and they know how to research on things because this is really important for me when it's come to the content business because content is the actual backbone of this business and as i said before like i never invest a single hour to build links so i have to create a content team which is somehow like we can't create content which is just easy like a copy so we have to create something which is really valuable so that's the thing and if it's come to the topic i basically go for something for the readers questions like what the readers have their mind when they starting this kind of thing or, or this hobby so what kind of question they just wanted to get answer so i basically go for this kind of things and obviously there are some low hanging topics like uh, list leaks or maybe how to post or something like that so for the keyword research sometimes i use my brain to like come up with some topic because i am working for this site for very long time and i personally involved way too much on this thing so i get a real understanding like what people actually looking for to get answer and obviously there are a few tools like hrefs i use basically day by day for the keyword research and obviously my writers sometimes suggest me like we have to do this because as i said before they have living this lifestyle before and someone is living this lifestyle now so they have maybe it's a somehow kind of a travel thing so if they travel in some places they just suggest me that i am doing these things can we cover this topic and it sounds good to me to go then we just assign this topic to the writer and maybe if there are some personal stories like if they use any products before and they just trying to try wanted to write her i used this before and i just wanted to write a review about this so these things can be okay to include our content calendar i hope i just answer your question well yeah absolutely it certainly sounds like you've really thought about this deeply and invested a lot of time into making the best quality content that you can which i think will shine through when people read the site you know you mentioned that you've got a portfolio of websites and other businesses that you work on will your team be moving on with you or will they be available for the buyer to use as well no so <laughs> my team is not like to move to the new buyer because they just already start creating content for the other businesses and as i said before i only assign any topic to my writers in my team like they have the real expertise like just for this website maybe sometimes a few people have multiple expertise on the multiple things but they have to be a real expert on these things and they have to be maybe in academic or maybe in hand experience on other things so my team is not willing to continue with the new buyer sure yeah that makes a lot of sense and how often do you add new content to the site actually i don't follow any strict rule like i have to publish this amount of content this month because i don't follow in any kind of things because there are way too many things behind this first like first i have to think about like how much time i have i can invest in this website so maybe it depends and sometimes it depends on the writer because sometimes a writer can take a leave and he can't write for this website maybe sometime one writer he just trying to move forward and don't want to continue with us maybe so then i have to find new writers and i have to train them with the process so maybe it takes time to get a new writers on board and so it depend on way too many things but usually i publish at least 8 to 10 a month but it depends sometimes i publish a 40 a month and sometimes maybe a 10 a month there is no strict guidelines like i have to publish this amount of content each month Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It still sounds like you're publishing a decent amount of content every month. Let's take a look at your typical work week now. Given the fact that you have this writing team that you can lean on, how much time are you spending on the business as the owner and what sort of activities or tasks are taking up your time? Yeah, it also depends. Sometimes maybe I put around 20 to 30 hours per week, maybe sometimes 10 hours a week, maybe sometimes zero, but mostly at least 15 hours a week because I have lots of things to do for this website because as I mentioned way too many times because this is a project I personally really like about because not about the niche because as I said I am really proud of this kind of website which is somehow authoritative in the niche so maybe I have to put way too many time on this things as I don't have a content manager for this business so I have to manage like I have to do the keyword research I have to write the content brief for the writers i had to send them to the writers 
and after I got the final draft, I have to make sure the writer is actually on point or if he or she miss anything or if he or she could add anything which can improve the content way too many things or maybe I have to make sure the content is up to the mark and if the new content from the new freelance writer we just starting out with us I sometimes send them to my team of writers who have the knowledge about the way we create content so maybe they can recheck and they just send them back to me and I have to make sure they did all the necessary changes then I back to the new writers and show him like this is what you did wrong and which could be improved so maybe I have to make sure everything is looks perfect for me at least and after that I send them to the VA who just do the content uploading images adding interlinking things and after he is done with things I just double check everything before hit the publish button and this is something I usually do with this and posting some time on social media and that's all I have to do for this website but I think though the new writers or VA is not moving with the new buyer I think the new buyer could easily reduce the amount of time invested on this website by hiring SEO manager or content manager who can just manage the content production but they have to make sure they have the interest in this niche or maybe the expertise and things like SEO like how to do keyword research or how to on page or how to optimize a page without overkilling everything overkilling the user experience and this kind of thing but I think it can be easily to easily done by the hiring of content manager for the website if new buyer is like to reduce the amount of time I basically invest on this website because I put way too many way too small amount of time building the other website because they are not that interested in me so maybe I just hire someone who know about this topic and to manage the content production and he is just working as a editor or content manager to manage the team of writers so that's all yeah that's a good call to hire a content manager I think that would definitely help the buyer you touched on a couple of the skills or interests that a buyer should have to succeed with the site So following on from that train of thought, what do you think are the biggest challenges that a buyer might encounter when taking over this business? Yeah, first of all, content website is pretty straightforward business model. And if the buyer know how to run the business, it's not that hard to run this business because there is nothing rocket science behind this business. But the buyer, if the one thing particular which might not that helpful for buyer because I don't have a really good system in place because I know some people have really good system like they have the good like SOPs for the things but I do have some SOPs for the creating content and things like that and which I can share with the new buyer which might help them to hire a good people or create a content which is at least good in standard so the thing is the operational part is somehow maybe difficult for the buyer because we have to find new writers and That's the thing I think. But I think it's not that hard, I guess. Yeah, I think you're right. I think finding the right writers for the site to maintain the high quality of content that you've already been putting out, I think would probably be a big challenge for them. What sort of support are you willing to offer the buyer to help ease that transition into the business? Yeah, I'm willing to offer as much the buyer need to for the smooth transition. Basically, I mentioned 90 days of phone or email, but obviously buyer can reach out to me anytime if you need any suggestion from me obviously if you just need from someone but I think I'm willing to offer as much as the buyer needed for the phone or email 90 days is perfect for me fantastic yeah I think that'll be very helpful for the buyer when it comes time to negotiating with the buyer in terms of the sale would you be open to something like an earnout agreement to be honest I'm not willing to negotiate with the earner but if there is around 85 to 90 percent on the table and rest is from earn out i'm okay to go with that okay perfect yeah so you're definitely interested in getting most of that capital up front yeah yeah actually perfect yeah and would you commit to a non-compete agreement yeah obviously i will fantastic well shubham that leads us to the final question of the interview and the one i think buyers are going to be listening to most closely so if you had to put yourself into the shoes of a buyer why do you think your business is a business worth buying? Obviously, there are a few things which I think personally because if I am willing to buy this website, 
these things will come to my mind first it's an authority website it's already established it's already just see some downturns from the other things and it survived way too many google algorithm and it's still standing and growing and this is a real authority business in this niche particular and the thing is there is way too many opportunities or low hanging fruit a new buyer can eventually just explore like monitor the email list creating more content because one thing i found really interesting about this business whenever i publish a new content it's ranked pretty first unless it's way too many competitive for the smaller keyword with a few hundred search volume you can easily rank maybe on first page if not one or two on the first page within maybe 20 to 30 days it's a really good sign this is a real authority business and obviously there is way too many trust from the readers which new buyer can usually like use in the purpose of creating our info products or maybe obviously there are some room for creating a physical products as well or maybe add a e-commerce section to sell something like a printable or ebook or maybe a physical product if we can outsource a few things for white label products like a kind of drop shipping thing so like i know a few sites are doing this and they are doing really good with this though i just can't do this because there are few things i think new buyer can easily explore this kind of thing and create a, a bigger brand like from what it is have these days so maybe these are the things yeah absolutely i think to find a business like this that is so authoritative in its niche as you say you know you can publish an article and it it ranks one or two in a month i think that's really incredible and and rare to find as a buyer so definitely a, a strong selling point for this business is there anything other details or about the business that you would like to share with our listeners that i might have missed i just forgot to mention a few things which new buyer can easily 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 use that to increase their revenue first is a paid guest post or sponsor post because i got too many emails every day they just try to get a sponsor post or link back from this website and they just ready to pay for this but i usually just hit delete because this is not kind of thing i basically prefer to do with any site i have so maybe if the new buyer is like to increase the earning he can easily explore these things and rather than this i think there are way too many website who just ready to offer like affiliate they are just willing to add their affiliate in our website so affiliate link so new buyer can easily increase the affiliate earning by just onboarding with some other website and they willing to willing to send free products maybe if the new buyer can he can take the free products and test them with the team of writers and create a content around like images or videos around this topic and maybe this could be a good income stream for the new buyer so i just forgot to mention it before Yeah, I think those are really great avenues for growth and great ways to diversify the business as well. So a good shout there. Well, Shubham, thank you so much for coming on to the show and giving us more insight into you and your business. It certainly sounds like a business to watch out for. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Yeah, thanks for having me here again. It's an absolute pleasure. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 67494. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.